Big Oak Flat Road to Yosemite National Park, thousands pull off the highway annually to picnic and swim at a place called Rainbow Pools. Travelers have cooled off here since the road opened in the 1870s. On this episode of History Hunters, we'll visit this popular and sometimes deadly spot on the North Fork of the Stanislaus River and also visit nearby Groven, which has one of the oldest saloons in California. So hi, welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I'm on the Big Oak Flat Road entrance to Yosemite National Park, stopping here at a place called Rainbow Pools. It's a day-use recreation area. A lot of people for decades have been using this place to cool off in the summertime. And by the looks of the people who are here in early August, it looks like there's a lot of people who really enjoy using this very deep hole filled with very cold Sierra Nevada water. There was also some features here that nobody knows about, and I'll tell you about them on this episode of History Hunters. I am treading through all this debris. It's all driftwood pushed up to the edge to get a good look photograph the infamous rainbow pools a lot of people know that this place is used for swimming and diving it's very deep here in fact I've talked to people who've dived and they say that they don't even know how deep it is however on that hill was the cliff house it was a restaurant this was a resort area on Big Oak Flat Road for those going to Yosemite National Park. The building was up there. It was on stilts right over that rock where that man's standing. It's been removed. Back in the 1940s, it was a popular stopping place. In fact, I found this picture of people swimming here. It's pretty cool that they look like they're from the 1940s. Sarah's over there trying to entice uh, squirrels to come to her. There's been a lot of accidents here over the years as well. People diving, hitting rocks, but not too many people know about the fact that there was the Cliff House restaurant. Pioneer families would travel up the road past this pool, often taking days by wagon. And in the summertime, they would stop and swim here and frolic at this location. Pretty hard to get over there. I'll help you. Yeah. I was standing up there and I was pretty dizzy. The cliff house would have been right up here on stilts. This place looked much different than it did in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. And it boasted the cliff house restaurant and the cliff house lodge with places to spend the night if you didn't want to go on to Yosemite including an apartment-like building and several cabins. It's all been removed, and I was thinking that the lodge could have been in this small area behind the restroom building, which is now completely overgrown with trees and bushes. I also think that a row of units could have been in this area, which is now the picnic area, but I, I can't be sure. A lot of people don't know that right up here at this location was a place where you could wet your whistle. It was called the Old Mine Cocktail Cavern and it was inside of the hill in this area somewhere. I've tried to look for indications of where it was, but I'm not seeing any place where it was. This place went back into the hillside. It was kind of like a cave where you could get drinks, and uh, it had some signs in there, the old toll road signs that were hanging above the bar, and it was a pretty cool thing. I thought it was on this hill up here. Such a cute board. The restaurant was over this direction, past these cars, and it was partially on stilts built across here. This would have been the entrance. 
to the restaurant. It would have straddled from here all the way over to that rock. So that entire structure occupied this area. If you look right here, below my feet, it's a concrete wall. It looks like it's about 20 feet high, which kind of shouldered this end of the, right, the eastern end of the restaurant. Uh, over here, I believe, there's no sign of it through this ivy. It would have been the, the tavern or the cavern inn. The old mine cocktail cavern would have been right in here. I believe. I'm not sure if it would have been right in here. It looks like if they did fill it in, they had it filled it in with backhoe. This looks like it might be where it was. In fact, I see an archway of rock. It probably caved the entire thing in right here. But cool, think about your grandparents. Maybe your grandfather stopped in here and got some beer or some cocktails on his way to Yosemite. If any of you have information as to where the old mine cocktail cavern was on this stretch of this day use area, please leave us a comment in the comment section because I'm really curious as to where it was. Again, not a lot of information at all about this, but the photographs speak for themselves. So I've come up the way here from the bridge, up from the falls, and here's the evidence that there was a structure here. It was a building that was used for rentals, possibly was cabins, but you see it in the background. One of the, one of the pictures of the falls, you can see in time this foundation for this side of the building is uh, all cracked up. <clears throat> Nature has its way of taking things away. It looks like it's a piece of tile. There's some more evidence of the building that was here. It's like some foundation pieces way down here. I'm sure these were cabins they rented out big chunks of concrete that were probably used for pillars. I'm sure the structure was up here, but uh, that's pretty cool. That water is so clear, you can see at the bottom. So there's really not a lot that I know or have discovered in my research about this, this place. Uh, it was a resort, judging by the cars, it was the 1940s, maybe early 1950s. There's some old rusty pipes down here. That's interesting because it looks like their pipes dump right into the river here. Those are back in the days when there was not as much environmental concern as there is today. Here's another wall. This is some really fat rebar. Here's another piece of cement that was used to anchor something. Like it was a round pipe right here by the bridge. This is a new bridge. Some 11 miles from Rainbow Pools is a town that was first established in 1849 and named First Garote, a Grote. A French man named Raboul built an adobe trading post and later came the Savory Hotel. The town reportedly hung thieves from the limb of an oak tree, hence its name. In 1875, the town stubbornly changed its name to Groveland. So I'm in Groveland, California, and we're gonna take a look at the oldest saloon in California. It's called the Iron Door Saloon dates back to the 1850s. The American Legion Hall, built in 1918, once housed the Justice Court, while the downstairs was a library. Chances are, if you've been to Yosemite through the Big Oak Flat route, you've gone through this quaint little town. Sarah and I decided to come and check it out. I'm just taken by this pretty cool old house over here. Many of the buildings down at this end are original. 
The Groveland Hotel was the second hotel built in town, about 1853 or 1854. Mining efforts waned, by 1877, Groveland was reduced to a population of about 100. Short mining booms followed, but in 1915, the town became the headquarters for much of the business connected with the building of the O'Shaughnessy Dam at Hetch Hetchy. The Hotel Charlotte is on the National Register of Historic Places and was built in 1921 to help house some of the workers who built the O'Shaughnessy Dam at Hetch Hetchy Valley. The Iron Door Saloon reportedly is the oldest liquor serving establishment in California. It began in 1852 as the Granite Store, which sold booze to Myers. It later became the Tannehill Store, became a full-fledged saloon in 1896, and named the Iron Door Saloon in 1937. On the outer wall of the Iron Door Saloon is a giant mural of John Muir, who likely did pass through Groveland to and from Yosemite. On the opposite side of the street from the Iron Door Saloon is the Iron Door General Store that was actually the town's Texaco station built in 1935. The inside of the saloon is probably what you would think a saloon that old would look like. I was impressed with the rock walls and the dollar bills tacked to the ceiling, as well as the antique fire hose cart. The walls also were decorated with the heads of deer, a buffalo, and other animals. As we ate hamburgers and I drank a Diet Coke for lunch, I wondered how many drinks had been poured over that bar in the last century, and also wondered how many walked out drunk and failed to negotiate the white knuckle ride down the old priest grade. I was more than intrigued to see that hanging over the stage in the saloon was the old sign that once hung in the old mine cocktail cavern. It was a sign for the old Big Oak Flat in Yosemite Turnpike Road that showed the charges to travel over the road, when the county purchased the road 30 years after the road was created, it also eliminated the tolls charged. In case there was any question about the definition of an automobile, the sign clearly stipulates vehicles not used with horses. No. Honestly, now it's been said that the hangman's tree, the first hangman's tree was right here, right between the alley here. The hangman's tree was right here. It was a fairly big oak tree right here in the alleyway, right at the edge of the sidewalk said that for many years they left it in the ground as a stump until people walked over it and it started becoming kind of a nuisance as the wood started decaying. So they finally pulled it up and took it out. Many of the buildings that are on this block here are original. Most of the other buildings in this town are fairly recent. Check it out, the old metal siding. Ten siding in the buildings. False front. Oh yeah, false front here. It's now the Helping Hands thrift store. Well, in a Mexican restaurant. This beautiful old house. I want to thank you so much for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. It was a brief look back at a time of history that's long since been forgotten. We trust that you enjoyed this episode of History Hunters and our visit to Groveland, California. We would always appreciate a thumbs up, perhaps a comment, and always subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much.